Not every as seen on TV product's a waste of money. In fact, some even help you save it. Come along and join us as we test TV money savers. With a little help from our sponsor, Declutter, we'll even show you how to make some money. Here's the Ultra HD Clear Vision Antenna, boasting no monthly contracts and the promise of getting you access to all the high-definition TV you crave. This $15 octagonal antenna offers convenience and savings over the cable company. Let's test it. Take the antenna's connector and attach it to the coaxial port of your TV. While you're back there, you might as well give it a little dusting as well. When that's all done, just apply the included adhesive and stick it somewhere accessible. Locate your channel finder or auto program on your television. Just run that thing and you're good to go. I was pleasantly surprised with the results this little thing pulled down. Nearly 50 channels. Now obviously, broadcast television is already free, and you don't need a special Ultra HD antenna to get it. Pretty much anything metal will do. To further that point and help you save some dough, I went digging in my box of forgotten wires and found an old coaxial cable. I attached said cable to the back of my TV and mounted it on the side, then ran the channel finder. This time it took quite a while to finish, but finish it did, netting me about 20 channels. My DIY antenna just didn't have enough sparkle, so I tore back into my box and located my farkle. That's right, by attaching the farkle's metal directly to the coaxial cable, we just increased its reception. Running the channel finder one last time scored me an additional 10 channels. So just imagine what you could do if you had multiple farkles or a clothes hanger. Whether you decide to get a pre-made antenna or just construct your own, you're gonna save a ton of cash in the process. But what about making some too? Our sponsor this week, Declutter, has an awesome program that'll turn your old phone into a pile of cash. Check this out, selling your old phone back to your carrier for nothing and then buying a new one and locking in a two-year contract is a vicious cycle. In fact, over a two-year period, the average American spends two to $4,000 on their phone in service. So break the cycle and sell your phone to declutter instead. They'll not only purchase your old device outright, but they'll also pay you up to 30% more than a typical buyback program. Shipping and insurance are covered as well. All you gotta do is pack it up and send it away. Alternatively, you could just list it on an auction site, spend time taking photos, writing a description, and then dealing with hagglers. That's why I love to clutter. It's so simple. I was able to take that cash and put it towards an upgrade on their store. An unlocked iPhone 10 generally goes for $900. But on the Declutter store, I picked up a refurbished model for $6.95. After I received my iPhone in the mail, I unboxed it to reveal a pristine iPhone 10 with no scratches, great battery life, and a flawless screen. Declutter gives all their devices a 70-point inspection and even gives you a 12-month limited warranty. The last thing to do was switch to a SIM-only unlimited data plan for $40 a month. Using Declutter, I paid $6.95 for the iPhone X and sold my old one for $2.87. Then by switching to a SIM-only plan, I'll save $60 a month. After two years, that's nearly $2,000, or a 59% savings over Verizon. To get in on this, head to declutter.com. Use code HH2019 to earn an additional 10%. This is the Hydrolite, a flashlight that runs on water and hope. Soaking up your liquid assets at 25 bucks, this batteryless beast also doubles as a lantern, so we predict a tidal wave of value. After busting open the package, you'll notice that the monstrous Hydrolite is covered in durable rubberized armor, but it doesn't turn on initially. That can quickly be alleviated with a twist and a slide. Just pop off that bottom cover and reveal the fuel cell within. To charge up the cell, you gotta dunk Granny's hair roller into some water for about 10 seconds, and I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that'll work too, don't ask. After you shake out the excess water, put the flashlight back together, and it'll come right on with the click of a button. Now, although the beam seems quite dim under the lights, the nighttime is where the hydrolite kinda shines. For our beam comparison, we'll be using an incandescent mag light, the hydrolite, and an LED mag light to find out who's the brightest bulb on the block. Clearly, the incandescent mag light does a fine job of illuminating the area, and when we tested the hydrolite, it seemed to have a powerful direct beam, although lacking any residual glow. Finally, onto the massive LED mag light, which kindled the flame and praised the sun with our unwitting heroes, actually leaving Bruce Banner a bit tanner. 
Our bedroom test yielded similar results, showing a dim glow with the incandescent light, whereas the Hydra casts a more direct bluish beam wherever you point it. The LED mag light had an opposite effect lighting up just about everything except what's in front of you. When powered on for over 24 hours, the light continued to glow on just that original dip of water, although we did notice a little corrosion starting to appear on the outside of the cell soon after. After we re-dipped the fuel cell into water, the Hydra regained its strength and we were headed outside to see how bright the lantern really is. It's fairly obvious that the lantern is excellent at creating a warm, widespread glow and it's a pretty bright light, but it really comes in handy when you're able to quickly swap over to flashlight mode if there's wildlife about. To sum it all up, the Hydrolite performs comparably in a pinch and excels when used as a lantern. But when you consider the 300 hour lifespan of the fuel cell as compared to an exponentially shorter battery life in traditional flashlights, the Hydrolite is guaranteed to be a solid investment over the long run and replacement cells are actually pretty cheap. Nothing wastes money like tossing out food that you could have preserved, but the always fresh vacuum sealer claims to be the one-stop shop of food preservation. Coming in at around 16 bucks, this handy contraption is guaranteed to save you some money, if it works. After sliding the contents out, we've got six reusable bags, instructioning on suctioning, and the vacuum sealer, which looks like those fancy pepper shakers they keep at all the upscale restaurants. It's got a single button on the top of the unit to power it up, as well as a small intake on the bottom. All right, let's fire it up and see if this thing sucks. To give you some idea of how it works around the house, we started off by loading up a block of cheese and sealing the zipper. Now it's important not to overfill the bags or they won't maintain that heavily sought after vacuum seal. Just center the intake right over the marked hole and press the button on top of the unit. The suction aspect can be a bit temperamental, it has to be lined up perfectly, but once it starts to vacuum seal, the bag will immediately start to contract. We tested it on some sausages, salmon, and bacon as well, all to great results. Our verdict is not only does this unit work very well, but the fact that you can wash the bags out and reuse them is a value in itself. That all being said, perhaps our more thrifty viewers don't want to drop 16 bucks on a vacuum sealer because they've got Ziplocs on deck. We can respect that. One way to get your budget sealer on is to just load up a Ziploc bag, insert a straw, and seal it to the edge. Now slowly and meticulously submerge the bag into a vat of water and watch in awe as most of the air is pushed right out. The final step is a double. Give the straw a healthy slurp as you quickly remove it and seal the bag at the same time. All things considered, this has phenomenal results. Now you obviously don't want to be slurping up raw meat, so it's okay to avoid the straw altogether. Just let the water pressure do the bulk of the work instead. Now this isn't going to win you any vacuum sealing awards but the seal is fairly tight and it'll certainly get you a little extra shelf life out of your goods. Is it hot in here or is it just my handy heater? The idea behind this gadget is to save money by heating just the room you're currently occupying. But is it effective? And what about the rest of your mansion? Boasting an adjustable thermostat and programmable timer, this device has an unimpressive 2.5 score on Amazon. But as they say, heater's gonna heat. After removing it from its boxy prison, the handy heater is clearly a formidable piece of hardware with the added benefit of looking just like a Cylon. So say we all. We've got a power button on one side and the back has a plug that can be rotated up or down depending on the orientation of your outlet. Moving to the top, there's a temperature gauge and of course some buttons to control the unit itself. After retrieving the instructions from the bottom of the box, it's best to have the whole family come and have a good read before they try and get in on this. Once you've got it plugged in, just flip the switch and the heater fires right up, emitting an orange glow from a small light inside. The default setting was a comfortable 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect. Surprisingly, our Starfleet-issued phaser registered between 200 and 240 degrees, and you could really feel the warm breeze just blasting out. Okay, so we've established that it works. Now how about installing it in this bedroom for a little taste of Miami? Beginning the test with an ambient temperature of 63 degrees, we let the helpful handy heater hammer away for about 45 minutes. After that period of time elapsed, there was a 5 degree rise in room temperature. Moderately impressed, I said, show me what you got and gave it 30 more minutes alone. Once time was up, we were happy to see that the desired 70 degree mark was reached, but it wasn't the tropical paradise you might have hoped for. Now what about the noise? Well, when you have the fan set to low, you probably won't even notice it. 
When you set it to high, ah, no big deal, as long as you like jet engines. After bumping the thermostat to 73 and giving it another few hours, it would appear that the thermostat was merely there for show as our tricorder was registering at 77 degrees. In fact, it didn't shut off until we manually turned it down, so be careful of leaving this thing unattended. All in all, considering the automatic shutoff to be imperative, the handy heater's results are tepid at best. It's ideal as supplemental heat for a room that doesn't get warm, but due to its unreliable sensors, you're better off skipping this one and grabbing a blanket instead. Boom! Just saved you 30 bucks. Thank you for checking out our first video of 2019, and a huge thank you to Declutter for sponsoring it. Make sure you go to declutter.com and use the code HH2019 when you're selling an old device. You get 10% more added on. For any as seen on TV requests, drop them in the comments, and we'll see you next time.